Have you got a great idea for a tattoo but no idea where to put it? Stay tuned for some information on placement. Hey guys, I'm Hayley Tattooer and this is Tattoo Talk. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing placement. You've got a great idea for a tattoo, but you have no idea where on your body you should put it. There are a few standard guidelines that we as tattoo artists follow and a couple of extra tips which I'll discuss in this video to help you decide on placement. Now just a quick disclaimer, these are very general rules when it comes to discussing placement. And as they always say, rules are meant to be broken. So by all means, these are not rules that you have to follow, they're just designed Designed to help you get a better understanding of how as artists we like to work when placing a tattoo. So my first general rule of placement is that up and down is when the body is in its most relaxed position. When you are standing with your arms down by your side, head facing the front in a relaxed state, that is where we as artists dictate where up and down, north or south, Gravity, basic rules of gravity are determined in the orientation of your tattoo. A lot of people are not sure, especially on the arms, so forearms mostly, but also on thighs, which way should I get the tattoo? Should I get it so that it's facing upwards in my relaxed position or should I get it so that it's facing upwards when it's facing me. Generally, we would recommend going back to that rule and saying have it facing up when your body is in relaxed position. Therefore, when your arm is down by your side, that way is going to be up. However, when your arm is up like this so that you can read or see what is whatever is on your arm, that way is going to be upside down, going by our rule, when your arm is down by your side. Same thing with your legs. Now, first little edge on our disclaimer, that is totally fine if you want something, if you want a tattoo on your forearm facing towards you so that you can read it, that is totally fine, that is personal opinion. A lot of tattoo artists will advise you against it and the reason for that is because if you put any other tattoos on your arms, if you go towards a sleeve or even if you just have a couple of little tattoos on your arms, whatever you put facing you is going to be upside down in relation to whatever tattoos you get in the future. And what you get at the end of the day is a very messy composition with tattoos oriented different ways. Same thing with putting them sideways. You can definitely do that, no worries at all, if that is going to be the only tattoo on your arm. However, if you have a sideways tattoo, a tattoo facing this way, a tattoo on the outside, in the correct, or what we call correct orientation, you're going to end up with a very messy overall composition. So if you're going for a nice, neat composition or collection of tattoos over time, you would adhere to our general rule, which is up and down is determined by your relaxed position. My second general rule of tattoo placement would be that faces in your tattoo, whether it be beautiful female faces, animal faces, anything that has a face, should be directed to the front of your body where possible. Of course, it's not going to be able to be faced forward if it's flat on your back or on your chest, but on arms and on legs, if possible, have the tattoo oriented so that the face is directing forward on the body. There's not really any particular reason for this. It's just good aesthetic feng shui. My third general rule of tattoo placement is to utilize the space available. So basically what this means is if you're going for a half sleeve or upper, upper arm half sleeve, it would be best to utilize that whole space if you're going for a sleeve. So you, you wouldn't put a tattoo that's going to, end product's going to be this big right here if you're going for a sleeve eventually. And here I'm going to give you a very important tip, an extremely important tip on tattoo placement. If this is the biggest tip I can give you in this video, it is to take into consideration placement of your future tattoos. It's so hard to look into the future and get an idea of what tattoos you're going to be getting down the track. So for example, it's your first tattoo, you go into the tattoo shop, you have a look at some of the designs that they have in their books and you find a beautiful armband design. You think that that is exactly what you want. That is fantastic. That's what you're going to go with. Cool. However, if two or three years or 10 years down the track, you decide that you want to go for a full sleeve, you then have a very straight band of dark material on your bicep, which you then have to either cover or incorporate 
into your sleeve. Another reason that you needed to take into consideration your future tattoos is because you could be, with the positioning of your tattoo, creating strange gaps between your other tattoos. So if you have a sleeve, you're going for a sleeve of separate pieces or a leg sleeve of separate pieces, you need to take into consideration the gaps that you are creating. Because if at the end of the day you want to see as little skin as possible, you have to take into consideration what shape of gap you're creating. If the gap is big enough to put a new tattoo in or if it's just going to be an awkward space between your tattoos. So that's another one to think about. So coming back to my general rule of utilizing the space available. You need to think about the placement on your body, your future tattoo ideas, the gaps that you're creating to make sure that you're not going to make it difficult down the track to continue with your tattoo vision. So general rule of placement number four is to follow the flow of your body where possible. This mostly applies to large scale tattoos, so sleeve designs, back pieces, leg sleeves, torso pieces, you really need to take into consideration the flow of the body. So to give you a better understanding of the flow that I'm speaking of, have a look at this little diagram here that I've created. It displays the basic flow pattern of your muscle structure down your arm. So for example, if we were going to work on a sleeve design, a big cohesive sleeve design, you can see up at the deltoid area, you've got more of a round section and then flows down with the tricep around the elbow sort of a round shape on the inner bicep and flows nicely around down wrapping towards the front of your arm aesthetically if you draw something to flow with the body it is going to look amazing it's going to flatter your body so those are more or less the general basic rules that I like to follow when helping people decide their tattoo placement and also designing a tattoo to fit the placement that the person wants now a question I also get asked a lot by clients when trying to decide their placement is if the tattoo will be affected by weight loss. The answer is both yes and no, and that is also why it's a good question. Places on the body that will most be affected by weight gain and loss would be the stomach area, the ribs, lower back or love handles, the breast area, underneath the bicep, and inner thighs. If you are considering losing a large amount of weight in the foreseeable future, I may advise against getting those areas tattooed until the weight is lost, just because those are the areas that are most likely to cause distortion with change of size. Apart from the placements that I mentioned that would be affected, I wouldn't be too stressed about that subject. But ladies, you do need to take into consideration your decision to have children in the future, as if you have tattoo placed on your lower stomach hip area uh, or the front of the the front of the hip anywhere around the belly button and some sternum pieces may be affected by pregnancy it really depends on your skin type whether or not you're more prone to stretch marks because stretch marks will ruin an existing tattoo they tattoos can be applied over stretch marks but if you have an existing tattoo that stretches and develop stretch marks through the tattoo that can cause significant distortion to your tattoo. So with all the important details aside, let's have a look at some popular placements for small tattoos. And just because I say it's popular, doesn't mean that you're limited to these placements. Artists and clients really are moving towards more alternative, more abstract placements on the body, which is fantastic. But these are just examples of what I deem popular placements for small tattoos as an artist. I've popped it in a diagram for you to have a look at too. So we've got the top of the feet, the inner and outer ankles, the front of the ankle actually is becoming more popular, um, and inner calf and back of calf for small, when I say small I mean anything palm size or smaller. Front of the hip lower bikini line, front of the hip in the upper bikini line. A lot of people like to get little novelty tattoos on the butt cheek. Got side of the hip towards the back, center of the lower spine, up the spine. People like to place little tattoos here and there or a large strip of tattoos down the spine. On the shoulder blade, inner wrist, inner arm, just above the elbow, on the top of the arm on the shoulder or the deltoid, chest or breast, under the collarbone, back of the neck, and behind the ears. So these are tattoos that you can imagine being anywhere from about a centimeter up to about palm size. So let's have a look at some example placements for medium sized tattoos. So these would be tattoos that range from palm size to filling up an entire area of space. So the upper sleeve 
or the lower sleeve or the thigh, that kind of thing. So if we look at the diagram, we've got full shin, back of calf, could also be the outer calf or inner calf, the knee area, full thigh, back of thigh lower, back of thigh upper, or just the entire thing, lower stomach, which is more popular with men, a full sternum piece or a lower back piece, the upper half sleeve, which includes the inner bicep area, a full chest piece or two chest plates, and the medium areas on the sides of your neck. So that covers the medium size tattoos. And last but not least, we have the large scale tattoo placements. So you can see in the diagram I've marked in turquoise what we call the sleeves. So you've got basically an arm sleeve or a leg sleeve and this encapsulates the entire area shoulder to wrist or shoulder to knuckles depending on if you want to get your hands tattooed. You can also do a three quarter sleeve so that basically goes down from the shoulder to three quarters of the way down your arm halfway between your elbow and wrist and a full leg sleeve which can be hip to ankle or hip to toes. You've also got the full front torso and a full back piece which can include or not include the butt cheeks. So large scale tattoos can be either made up of a combination of small tattoos that have been designed to fit in tightly with each other to fill up an entire space, or they can be designed start to finish to fit the whole area perfectly without much skin tone showing through. So there are some examples of tattoo placements for small, medium and large tattoos. So if we do a quick recap of the rules of placement, up and down is when your body is in its most relaxed state. Faces in tattoos shall always face forward when possible. Try to utilize the entire space available in that section of body based on your future tattoo vision. Follow the flow of the body and of the muscle structure where possible. Keep in mind future weight fluctuations, including pregnancy. And most important, take into consideration your future tattoo placement. I love doing these videos, so if you have any topics that you want me to cover, please comment and also like and subscribe, and I will see you next week.